excuse the wind, we are in the middle of a storm right now. I forgot what the storm's called. It's, I think it's called Storm Windy. It's FAC. I said FAC then, not the other word. But yeah, it's very windy today, so uh, please excuse any wind noise. But yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to process down some of this gorse here. We're going to collect the flowers. I want to show you how to make a good cup of gorse tea out of that and I'll tell you all about the nutritional values and the medicinal values and all that later on but yeah let's find some good gorse first and uh, we'll collect some flowers let's do this yep so this is your gorse bush here very spiny prickly little bush flowers are totally edible they've got a slight, slight vanilla sort of coconut -y taste um, yeah, tastes vanilla -y, sort of coconut -y, just mild. And, yeah, we can make tea from these. Um, you can make cordial, you can make wine. Uh, it's always good to check when you're picking these buds that there are no maggots. You do find your old white maggot inside there, and you don't really want that popping up in your tea, floating around. No one likes a floater in their tea. But yeah, these are totally edible. It's the only part of the plant that is edible. You've got to be careful with these spines. They, they do carry a bacteria that is um, a lot stronger than MRSA, which is a very dangerous superbug. It's um, not something you want to get scratched and have it in your system because uh, it's a bacterial superbug that's very deadly. And there's been many stories. Uh, there was a woman, a lady on a moor one day who scratched herself walking a dog, and two, I think it was two days later she was dead from some sort of flesh eating disease that was uh, living on one of these, uh, these spines. And, and there was an army lad on uh, exercise as well, down Dartmoor somewhere, and he scratched his ankle on one of these little spikes. And two days later he was dead. So yeah, this, um, be careful when picking them, uh, especially when it's windy like it is now. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to process these now and uh, we'll make a cup of tea. Of course, it's the same rule applies to anything you're picking in the wild. Don't pick anything below waist height because obviously dogs, we, and other animals, we don't want to be picking anything from weed on. So I would go for the above waist height rule and uh, pick away. I've got a nice little hoard here now. If you can see that on camera, I've got a nice little hoard there. So I'm going to head off somewhere quiet now and make a brew. So uh, yeah, you don't necessarily uh, have to boil it as in, you know, you could just bring hot water out with you and add it to it there and make it a brew like that there so um, we're going to find somewhere out the wind now and we're going to make a brew so uh, I'll talk to you more about this plan then let's go make a brew so like i said we've had a storm over last weekend and it's still lingering right today um parked up in a forest car park no other cars just me so i'm thinking if i keep my voice down a bit i might get to see some wildlife today because there's no one about to scare them off look at that view down there you can see the channel the bristol channel down there but all this land here used to be royal hunting land um, back in the 1700s, 1600s. Um, it's the Y Valley Estate and uh, it's full of deer. And it used to be full of deer and wild boar back in the day, hence they used to hunt here. And uh, it's a great little nature reserve, lots of wildlife here. So, I'm going to try and keep my voice down today and see if we can see some uh, some deer, some fallow deer maybe. Excuse any wind noise, like I said we are on the tail end of a storm. And, uh, right, let's go make this brew. <laughs> Bit of nature's own fertiliser. See all these places here where deer probably uh, sleep to at night and nestle in. Look, you can see all the poo everywhere. So yeah, very active place at night probably for the uh, deer. There's all walkways all through these places, and there's poop everywhere. So uh, we're obviously quite abundant in this area. This is a nice little spot though, I think I'll make my tea here. Right, let's get this going. Right, I'll just set up my uh, tripod guys, and we'll have a look at making this tea. Nice little spot. That's what we're going to do now guys, we're going to make some coarse tea. 
I bought this as it's very handy for siphoning out all the bits of nasties we don't want in our ghost tea. Also this is a very handy little thing for ghost tea. It's got a little strainer on the top so once you put it put it in there it'll strain all the, uh, the goodness out and leave all the baddy bits in there. All I need is hot water. Like I said, I can't have a fire because I'm in a nature reserve today. I've got to respect the rules and regulations. You can't just go having a fire where you want, nilly willy. Got my ghost, got my ghost in here. My flowers, my petals. Um, I would normally separate all the petals out, get any bugs or, like I said, the white maggots. That go. But I've got that strainer there, so that's going to take all that out. So I'm going to put these. Oh, such a nice oh, vanilla scent. Anyway, I'll put them in here now. Oh, that's not right. I'll put them in here now. All in there now, guys and girls. All you have to do, tell you what ha oh. brambles, brambles. Get the cooks up. Get organized before you come out, like me, very organized. I carved this little oak spoon myself, which I use as a little honey dabber. So, add our hot water to the leaves. Ah, actually, I've missed, I've missed a little uh, uh, step. It's good to break down the leaves. Gets the flavour noise out. It's the old taste buds of the old. Uh, kind of smash it all up. And releases the flavour noise in there. Help release the flavour and the smell. Oh my goodness! Bruising. And we just plonk the hot water in. Here, like so. Should be enough. Lid back on. Like I said this before, it's very windy. We are on the tail end of a storm, so I do apologise for any wind noise. And you'll see that's gone bright yellow now. There, all the flavours and minerals are releasing from there now. We'll do that. We'll put that in there then. We'll give that a good press and look at the colour of that now. So, give that another press. And that's full of goodness in there. There's a few bugs in there, but a few bugs won't hurt you. And what we do now is we put this in here. Girls, of course, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful colour. So now we'll add a bit of honey. It's, it's, you don't really need a sweetener to it. You can really smell the vanilla smell. has got a very natural tea taste. It's got an almost pea taste to it as well, because it is part of the pea family. These pods with the seed pods, it's a very close family to the, uh, to the pea, the common pea. So you do get like a, a pea taste coming through, but um, it's like a vanilla aftertaste. 
but you don't really need to sweeten it because it is it's got that slight sweetness but I like to put a bit of honey in there so we'll put a bit of honey in there now just a drop that a stir with my little uh, spoon I made, my little uh, oak spoon, oak leaf spoon. And we'll pour that in my cook sack and away we go. Cheers. And that is how to make gorse tea. That is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Now with that guys, I'll leave you to it, uh, to carry on your day. If you like what you saw in the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to me yet, give me a subscription and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys and girls. Till next time. See you soon. So I'm going to make my way back to the van now. Have some lunch. I don't want to stay in the woods too long because like I said, we are in... Uh, I've got a thorn stuck in the back of my leg. Uh, we are in uh, storm weather. There is an amber alert out, so it's not wise to stay in the woodland too long. Don't want any trees falling on me. There's a lot of dead fall everywhere. It's all on the ground. So yeah, I've come what I need. I've done what I need to do. Come, I've come what I need to do. I've done what I need to do. I've shown you how to make gorse tea. So we're gonna go back and have some food. Till next time. Thanks for coming along. Love and light to you all. Much love. See you again.